Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about how to become a pro at proteases. Now, as Dr. Knapper alluded to in lecture 23, there's a lot of detail here, so we often forget what the big picture idea is. Simply put, the proteases are something that they take a polypeptide chain, some chain of amino acids, you add water, and you chop the polypeptide bond, generating two polypeptide fragments. Remember, all seven steps of this reaction mechanism that we're going to cover today contribute to this fairly simple overall idea. The reason that we have these proteases in our body is to get the amino acids from the proteins that we get from foods such as turkey, ham, burgers, and other meats and other foods. We have three basic types of serine proteases. We have trypsin, chymotrypsin, and elastigirl. I, I mean elastices. Each of these are responsible for cleaving certain amino acids. Today we're going to focus on chymotrypsin, which is involved in cleaving phenylalanine and tyrosine. What you'll notice about both of these amino acids is that their shape is incredibly similar. Likewise, the hydrophobic pocket where the reaction takes place only fits the shape of those two amino acids. It's kind of like one of those child games where the square shape only goes in the square area. You can't put the circle in the square, the triangle in the square. As hard as you try, it doesn't work. So in our serine protease reaction, we have a catalytic triad. So there are three amino acids that assist in making this reaction happen. We have histidine, aspartate, and serine. So histidine is responsible for removing a hydrogen from the serine hydroxyl group, which activates the oxygen, allowing it to react. We call this oxygen a nucleophile. Additionally, histidine later reacts with a water molecule doing the same thing and stealing a hydrogen. He's a chemical Mr. Steel Yo Girl. No, not funny. All right, moving on. Aspartate, which is negatively charged, as you know, stabilizes the positively charged histidine. He's like the histidine's therapist. He's like, why are you always so positive? Just stop, you're overreacting. Serine, which acts as a nucleophile, as we already talked about, is something that's a reactive species, attacks the carbonyl group of the polypeptide substrate, attacks that carbon, and through covalent catalysis, it makes a bond. And then we have our catalytic triad, Illuminati confirmed. Here we have our chymotrypsin. This is our enzyme. Notice how I said that we have a triad of aspartate, histidine, and serine. Well, aspartate in this just kind of sits off into the distance and cheerleads for this whole reaction. He's really not that involved. There's two things that we need to know. We have our hydrophobic pocket where our aromatic ring goes, which is typically found on our tyrosine or phenylalanine. And we have our oxyanion hole, which is where our oxygen hole goes. Oxyanion. Oxygen. Hey, that almost makes sense. Remember, our goal is to simply cleave this little silly polypeptide chain. And that's it. It takes seven reactions to do it. Seven. This is one of those times where you have a legitimate reason to be disappointed with your body. Step one, pretty much all you need to know is that the substrate slides into the DMs of chymotrypsin, right in the hydrophobic pocket. Hey, that wasn't so bad. Serine and Mr. Steel Yo Girl, I mean histidine, interact here. The histidine snags the hydrogen from the serine, which makes the serine super reactive. Remember, we called this guy a nucleophile. The oxygen being the highly sensitive, overdramatic element that it is, decides it needs to cry its life away in haagen ice cream and bonds to the carbonyl group looking for a short-term relationship to fix all of its problems. Remember that we had said that this bond was through covalent catalysis. The double bond slides on down to the oxygen, making it negative, so the hydrogen is taken and stabilized by serine-195 and glycine-193. This forms our enzyme substrate complex. Yeah, I get why it's called a complex now. Now that our oxygen on our polypeptide is negatively charged and our nitrogen on histidine is positively charged, we have the perfect scenario for our reaction. The polypeptide bond breaks and the electrons grab onto the hydrogen on histidine because carbon now only has three bonds. Oxygen decides to fix this issue using its free electrons from the negative charge 
to reform that double bond on the carbon. Now we've successfully cleaved our polypeptide chain. Reaction should be done, right? Shoot. Basically, if all of this makes sense up until this point, you can redo the steps and figure out how to reconfigure the enzyme back to its original state. So here's the four main steps to get our setup for our reaction. So number one, histidine takes a hydrogen. Number two, oxygen reacts with a carbonyl carbon. Number three, a double bond moves and makes oxygen negative. And number four, we break a bond and we have the release of something. Here we have water sliding into the reaction. If you remember from the earlier stages of BMSE 200, we had said that breaking a polypeptide chain is a dehydration reaction. It takes water. Step four, water comes, GG easy. Here we have the same basic principles as step two. Histidine steals the hydrogen, but this time it's from water, which again makes the oxygen super reactive. Like honestly, calm down oxygen. Uh, you'll remember that we called this guy a nucleophile. The oxygen grabs onto the carbonyl carbon through acid-base catalysis. The double bond moves onto the oxygen and our oxygen is negative, again. Seriously, oxygen has issues. This step is similar to step 3. Hydrogen from the histidine gets stolen, but this time it's by the hydroxyl oxygen on serine 195. The negative bond moves from the oxygen back and forms a double bond with the carbon. Uh, the bond breaks between the carbonyl carbon and the serine 195. And that's about it. We have release of our polypeptide chain. Remember we said that this would be an aromatic compound when we're dealing with chymotrypsin, so either phenylalanine or tyrosine. And our enzyme is fully reset and ready to go for the next reaction. So remember, here's the overall reaction that what we did in seven steps. And here's the four steps to set up and complete our reaction. We do this twice, the first time with the polypeptide chain and the second time with water. Thanks for watching.